Hello friends, welcome to Health Vizac, Medical Concepts Simplified. In this video, we will learn about hypokalemia, a clinical condition in which the plasma potassium is less than 3.5 millimoles. Potassium is a very important intracellular cation with a normal value of 3.5 to 5 millimoles, majority of which is present inside the muscles. It plays a very important role in the generation of action potential responsible for muscular contractions. Its regulation is done inside the body through dietary intake while excretion is done primarily through kidneys and in some amount via stools. Depending upon the level of serum potassium, hypokalemia can be differentiated into three categories of mild hypokalemia that is serum potassium between 3 to 3.4 millimoles per liter, moderate hypokalemia that is serum potassium between 2.5 to 3 millimoles per liter and severe hypokalemia that is serum potassium less than 2.5 millimoles per liter. Hypokalemia occurs either due to decreased intake of potassium or due to increased loss of potassium from the body or due to redistribution of potassium between tissue and the extracellular fluid. Increased loss of potassium may be either due to renal or extra renal source. Extra renal loss may be due to sweating or diarrhea or in nasogastric suction. Renal loss may be due to drugs like diuretics including thiazides and loop diuretics or due to penicillin derivatives or due to antifungals like posaconazole and etraconazole. Renal loss may also be present in clinical conditions like osmotic diuresis, salt wasting nephropathies, primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism, renal tubular acidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis and magnesium deficiency. Hypokalemia due to redistribution may be present in clinical conditions like metabolic alkalosis, insulin induced, post myocardial infarction, head injuries, drugs like beta adrenergic agonist and alpha adrenergic antagonist, hyperthyroidism, B12 and folic acid administration, patient on total parental nutrition, pseudo hypokalemia and in familial hypokalemic periodic paralysis. Hypokalemia predominantly affects on cardiac, skeletal and intestinal muscles and kidneys. Cardiac symptoms of hypokalemia include atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. ECG changes in hypokalemia include broad flat T waves with ST depression and QT prolongation, which are more marked in condition when serum potassium is less than 2.7 millimoles per liter. Hypokalemia results in hyperpolarization of skeletal muscles, which impairs the muscle capacity to depolarize and contract, thus leading to weakness and even paralysis. Apart from this, hypokalemia may also result in rhabdomyolysis. Hypokalemia also affects the normal movements of bowel, thus giving rise to intestinal symptoms of paralytic ileus. Hypokalemia may lead to bicarbonate retention, causing metabolic alkalosis. It may also lead to acute kidney injury and if not treated timely, may even lead to end-stage renal disease. Apart from this, hypokalemic polyuria may also be a clinical manifestation. The investigation which may be helpful in diagnosing hypokalemia and its causes include serum electrolyte level which may show potassium less than 3.5 millimoles. 24-hour urine potassium level, if its value is less than 15, then it is suggestive of hypokalemia associated with extra renal loss. Whereas, if its value is more than 15, then it is suggestive of hypokalemia associated with renal loss. Arterial blood gas or ABG showing metabolic acidosis is suggestive of hypokalemia associated with GI loss, especially diarrhea or renal tubular acidosis or diabetic ketoacidosis, whereas ABG showing metabolic alkalosis is suggestive of hypokalemia associated with diuretics and vomiting. Plasma renin activity and serum cortisol level may be helpful in diagnosing hyperaldosteronism which is one of the primary cause for hypokalemia. Apart from this, thyroid function test may be helpful in diagnosing hyperthyroidism. Serum magnesium level should be checked to rule out hypokalemia associated with hypomagnesemia. And finally, insulin levels should also be checked to rule out hypokalemia associated with excess insulin. While treating hypokalemia, we should first treat the underlying causes which may be hyperthyroidism, diarrhea, diabetic ketoacidosis or hyperaldosteronism. All the drugs which are causing hypokalemia should either be stopped or modified accordingly. Treatment of mild hypokalemia that is serum potassium between 3 to 3.4 should be done orally through syrup potassium chloride. Hypomagnesemia should be corrected at the earliest. Moderate 
और सिविर हाइपोकेलेमिया एसोसिएटेड विद सिम्टम्स ऑफ हाइपोकेलेमिक पीरियोडिक पैरालिसिस और अरिदमियस शुड बी ट्रीटेड एग्रेसिवली थ्रू इंट्रावेनस करेक्शन वाइल ट्रीटिंग पेशेंट्स ऑफ हाइपोकेलेमिया करेक्शन शुड बी डन आइडियली थ्रू सेंट्रल लाइन एक्सेस एट द रेट ऑफ टेन टू ट्वेंटी मिलीमोल्स पर आवर इफ पेरीफर लाइन्स आर यूज देन करेक्शन शुड बी डन स्लोली एट द रेट ऑफ ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी मिली मोल्स पर लीटर ओवर सिक्स टू एट आवर्स टू अवॉइड केमिकल फ्लबाइटिस वाइल ट्रीटिंग पेशेंट्स ऑफ हाइपोकेलेमिया थ्रू इंट्रावेनस करेक्शन सीरम पोटेशियम लेवल शुड बी चेक एवरी आवरली और टू आवरली टू अवॉइड अक्यूट राइज इन पोटेशियम लेवल एंड रिस्क ऑफ अर्धिमियास ऑल्सो कंटिन्यूस कार्डिक मॉनिटरिंग शुड बी डन वाइल ट्रीटिंग हाइपोकेलेमिया एसोसिएटेड विद रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इशूज करेक्शन शुड बी डन ग्रेजुअली टू अवॉइड द रिस्क ऑफ रीबाउंड हाइपर कैलेमिया वाइल ट्रीटिंग हाइपोकेलेमिया एसोसिएटेड विद इंक्रीज सिंपथेटिक एक्टिविटी हाई डोज प्रोपेनोलॉल ऑफ थ्री एम जी पर के जी कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज सो फ्रेंड्स दिस ब्रिंग्स एस टू द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो होप यू फाइंड दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन वैल्यूएबल एंड एप्लीकेबल इन योर क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस प्लीज डू लाइक एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो एंड हिट द बेल आइकन टू सी द लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फॉर मोर सच इन्फॉर्मेशनल वीडियोज ऑन मेडिकल टॉपिक्स प्लीज सब्सक्राइब यूट्यूब चैनल हेल्थ वाइजैक मेडिकल कंसेप्ट सिंप्लीफाइड थैंक यू